Center on the campus of Xavier University in Cincinnati, Ohio. Number 15, Xavier, the Musketeers out of the Big East. And the Ryder Bronx from the Metro Atlantic. Good to have you with us tonight along with uh, the Queen City's own Jordan Cornett. I'm Vince Welch. And uh, as mentioned with Greg and Jim talking pregame, what a terrific year it was for Xavier a season ago. Went to the Elite Eight, one game away from the Final Four. And Jordan, some believe that Xavier's going to be even better this year. What's the strength of this team? Well, Vince, we know why that is, right? It's an endangered species that the Musketeers possess. They have seniors. It's the last of a dying breed. Juniors that stick around for their senior campaign. J.P. Mercura and Trayvon Blewett are special, as productive as a duo as any in the country. These guys lead the way as they go, as does XU. Ryder in the red, open the season with a 90 to 75 win over Hampton. Xavier in the home white with a 101 49 win over Moorhead State. A 28 straight season opening win for the Musketeers. Look at our starting lineup. Stevie Jordan, the only returning starter for the Bronx. Starting lineups brought to you by Jeep and for the Xavier Musketeers, of course. Trayvon Blewett and J.P. Mercura will get a lot of the headlines, but Quentin Gooden, absolutely fantastic, as he subbed last year for Edmund Sumner, who went down with that injury, and Gooden stepped in and just really was a motor for this team down the stretch and into the tournament. He yeah, absolutely, Vince, and when Gooden, Gooden stepped in, this team kind of took off. Once he had to realize, he didn't have to look over his shoulder, Sumner wasn't going to be there. He could play cool. Confident basketball, and this team started to soar. And that's the young man with the basketball, Quentin Gooden, to start it. First possession, Xavier and Ryder from the Centos Center in Cincinnati. Good crowd out here, huh? For a late start, there's over 8,000 season tickets for Xavier in an arena that seats 10,200. Inside, and with authority, the sophomore Tyreek Jones. Tyreek Jones wastes no time. There's a distinct advantage in the interior. Incredibly physical. Knows what to do with the cars out real estate. High percentage finish. There's a whistle underneath and watch Tyreek Jones get the position inside. It's easy basketball. You don't want the big fellow necessarily put the ball on the floor, but a nice move. Physical, strong. Knew what he wanted to do with it. Wasted no time. Fielded a double team there. You got to act fast to prevent the turnover. Good move. Good start. Officials. To play while well, had a conversation with Tyron Marshall and Tyreek Jones, getting a little physical right out of the gate. First possession for Ryder, and that's with the basketball, the 23 of uh, Stevie Jordan, and he is the one that really takes them. But Durham, who misses that shot, not afraid to shoot it. Ryder's going to shoot a lot, they will miss a lot. One and done opportunities defensively for the Muskies. Another critical key. Inside turned over and Jordan now on the break. Gooden back to defend. And the first bucket, Stevie Jordan. Riders got to love opportunities like that. Look, it's a defunct offense. A lot of new pieces for Riders. So, how do you want to get it going offensively? Some Rosetta Stone. Translate that defense into some offense. Take a look at the SoFi keys to the game tonight. And it's really simple for the Muskies. This team is the better team. They have more talent. They're at home. you got to get off to a quick start. Don't give Ryder any confidence as it's starting to linger here early on. Ryder's starting to feel like they can play. And for Ryder, the great equalizer in college basketball, the long ball, the three-point shot. They knocked down 14 of them versus Hampton in their debut win. If they can get hot from distance, they can hang around in this game. So Xavier must defend and contest everything from beyond the arc. Keys to success, sponsored by SoFi, offering smart solutions to help you reach your financial goals. Kaiser Gates got that offensive rebound through the contact on the putback and hits the first of two. Kaiser Gates, another one of those guys when you talk about that improbable run from an 11 seed Xavier last year in the tournament. This guy mightily productive, 11 versus Maryland, 14 points versus Florida State. Some momentum coming into this season. Can it continue? Xavier in the man-to-man -man defense. We'll mix in some zone. Talk to Coach Chris Mack this afternoon and said they'll do a little bit of mixing it up defensively, offensively. They really want to get after you as you look at Mack, of course. 2016 National Coach of the Year. And that's good help defense. Now, when you talk about the Muskies defensively, Vince, they're not big, and a lot of people make that mistake calling them big. They're not that. 
They're long, especially at the guard spot, so they can deflect. One of the best in the country, Trayvon Blewett at 25 in the opening win Friday night over Moorhead State. Get used to saying that name this evening. I got a hunch. The guy told me he's special. Blocked by Gooden, corralled by Jordan Allen. Durham tries the baseline, knocked away, and Ryder will keep it. How about the range for Trayvon Blewett on this three-pointer? Yeah, check it out, the deep ball. You must have an awareness of him at all times. We saw him in pregame. Did he miss a three? He must have taken 20. He knocked them all down. So Ryder, that is failing to guard the most important guy on the floor. A breakdown defensively, he'll make you pay. He gave the NBA a good hard look in the offseason, decided to come back. He knocked down that three-pointer from NBA range, no question. And the shot clock violation. Ryder unaware. So many new faces on this Ryder team, and the one thing they lack is experience. And Coach Kevin Baggett said, we're going to have some growing pains early on, and really wants his team to just stay focused and get after it, improve every day. Absolutely. When you're close Inside, and Jones again for his second dunk. Tyreek Jones, high percentage shots both times. Two hand slams, lost inside. Jones comes away with it, and now it's tied up. Jones is so strong inside. Jones. He just simplifies the game. An incredibly physical guy. Coach talked about him improving, finishing. But when you're at ground zero, point blank right there, it's an easy ball game. Two handed jelly. 21 on the shot clock. Keelan Washington Ives has come in for Ryder. He has the basketball now and a whistle down low. And there's a foul going to be called on Tyreek Jones. That'll be his first. Here's a good look at Chris Mack in his ninth season as the head coach of the Musketeers. Graduated from here in 1992. Sean O'Mara into the ball game for the first time. Washington Ives goes to the bench for Ryder. What's O'Mara give Xavier? Well, he's another guy you talk about that improbable run in the tournament last year, right? Well, O'Mara was one of those guys who came on strong, was incredibly productive offensively, and is a big defending. He's a guy that's going to be in a reserve role. Can he provide a boost off the bench? Well, and a miscue off that inbounds pass. Turnover. So one thing Ryder can't afford to do, the unforced turnovers, that'll drive uh, Coach Kevin back at crazy. Coach Kevin Baggett's aware they got to have a flawless performance here tonight to even have a chance to keep this thing respectable. That's how special the opposition is in Xavier. Inside pass to Gooden. Gets it up off the window. First basket for Quentin Gooden, the sophomore from Campbellsville, Kentucky. Xavier got off to an 18 to 1 start in that opener on Friday against Moorhead State, and there's a whistle and a foul going against Makura. And when Gooden gets it inside, Xavier does a nice job getting the guards in the paint. Yeah, they? carving out space against his own defense, making yourself a receiver, collapsing that defense, and that's where the shots will come from, the heart of the paint. So, heady play from the point guard, who's gaining confidence with each play. Now he realizes he's not looking over his shoulder for a sub. It's his team, he's the quarterback. You never want to see one of your star players get injured, or, or any player on your team, for that matter. When Edward Sumner went down last year for Xavier, obviously one of the, the stars of this ex-ball club. And while that hurt them, at the same time, if you want to find a silver lining in it, it was that Quentin Goodwin got that playing time. Uh, Gooden started the last 17 games of the season, and that was invaluable experience when it looks ahead to this season. No question, as the Muskies are called for a uh, lane violation there. It was baptism by fire. Gooden was thrust into that role, and in a lot of ways, looking back at it, hindsight being 2020, you could say it was addition by subtraction because this guy provided that stability at the point guard position, allowed the stars around him to shine like a McCure, like a Blue. Little zone pressure from Ryder. Shot clock at 15. Gooden drives and kicks for Kaiser off the mark. Frederick Scott pulled down the rebound. He had a double-double in that season opening win against Hampton. 
Stevie Jordan gets into the paint, knocks down the jump shot. Jordan's got all five for Ryder. This one you like to see a little bit more movement. You got that zone flash. Makura misses the three, and there's going to be an over the back on the 22 of Kaiser. Kaiser Gates. Xavier with an 8-0 run on top now by four. Big East College Hoops on FS1 is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. The Ryder Bronx in Cincinnati to take on the 15th ranked Xavier Musketeers. Xavier had an 8-0 run during that first four plus minutes in the first half, but uh, Ryder came back with a couple of free throws and a basket by Stevie Jordan. Jordan has all six of the points for Ryder. Yeah, and if you're Ryder, you want to micromanage this game. You want to play in four minute increments, those media timeouts, those segments. Try and win them or at least be competitive and see as long as you can hang in this thing, put some heat on Xavier, that home team. You're not supposed to be here. You're playing with nothing to lose. Those are sometimes the most dangerous teams. The guys that are expected to get blown out. So they're hanging in this thing. That early start for Xavier happened, but they allowed the opposition to creep back in. Xavier with the same five on the floor. Blewett, Gates, Gooden. There's Blewett, long three, off the mark. Gates pushed off, and that's going to be number two on Kaiser Gates. And you know you got your buddy when he's dating a girl, and you're like, yeah, that's not the right one for you. You're settling, you're settling. That's what Xavier's offense is doing right now against this 2-3 zone. They're settling for the easy shot, the long ball. you got to have those receivers flash in the middle of the paint, collapse that defense. Once you do, the world is yours. Kick out to shooters or drive at the rim and finish. Is that a good friend or a bad a friend? That's friend that's you're settling. Oh, okay. that's, that's how that works, right? <laughs> off the bounce, shot up and off by Frederick Scott. You don't, want to interior. Settle. you don't want to settle. Defense on the interior is Gates in transition. Kaiser Gates knocks down the three-pointer. He was 4-4 four four from beyond the arc Friday night against Moorhead. Really special talent. Coach Mack is really pushing him to hunt that three-point shot. Believes he should shoot better than 40% from distance. That kind of talent. Inside, nice dish to Makura, and he draws the foul. I believe I mentioned a moment ago that Kaiser had two fouls. One of those was assessed as someone else. So Kaiser just with the one, Kaiser Gates with just the one foul. And this is just in transition. Failure to commit defensively, and Gates, when he gets those feet set and those shoulders square, he eyes it, he spies it. So go ahead and buy it. Deuce, deuce with the triple. J.P. Makura, the free throw line, the senior from Lakeville, Minnesota. I like this kid a lot, Vince. I like how he's gotten better and evolved with every season. Now sits here as a senior. Now he's one of those guys, he's not afraid of the moment, not afraid of the opposition, who he's going against. When the moment and the stage, is the, the lights are the brightest, he wants the ball. What kind of guys you want on your team? Hits them both. Nine point lead down for Xavier. Largest here in the first half. Washington Ives back in for Ryder. Also, Tyree Randall seeing his first action. Washington Ives off the bounce and now gets it to Randall, the left hander. Can't get the bounce. Blew it, pulls the rebound. From the corner, off the mark. Najee Marshall, the freshman from Atlantic City, New Jersey, where they're really high on him. That shot off the mark from Randall, and the rebound pulled down, and Xavier will run it. Najee Marshall, and there's an offensive foul on Makura. Mentioned Najee Marshall missing that, that three-pointer from the corner, but well, the staff really high on Marshall and the freshman, the, in general, the three freshmen that Xavier's got. High on Marshall because he could do so much. Take a look defensively right here. It's that arm bar to create the advantage. I can't argue with the refs. I think that's a solid call. Makura, who's comfortable playing the point guard position? Before they settled on Gooden, it was him for a cup of coffee running that spot. So it's not like he's out of his comfort zone. That's just good defensive position to create the turnover. How can Ryder capitalize? There's Makura going to the bench now with those two fouls. And 
now they're deciding whether or not they are going to put that on the cure or whether it's actually going to go on Sean O'Mara. Watch the pick that O'Mara. Yeah, oh, O'Mara's so the ankle. Tripping. Okay. Well, he could have taken your pick because it looked like it'd be the arm bar from the cure, but indeed it was O'Mara sticking out his, his foot. But that looked unintentional. I don't like that call going against the big fight. Shakira goes to the bench. He was supplanted. Anyway. I don't like it. Tyree Randall on the bounce, left-hander off the mark. Gooden fights for it, and it's going to be a second chance for Ryder. Ryder took 31 threes in their win. In the season opener Friday over Hampton. Second chance. This one doesn't go either. Used to be more of an inside-out team in recent years for Bag Baggett's uh, clubs, but they really go outside in now, does Ryder. Paul Scruggs into the ball game. Another one of the freshmen for Xavier. Where's number one? Blewett takes it in. Contact inside, and O'Mara's going to go to the free-throw line. Coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report, highlights from Providence and Minnesota. The 14th-ranked Golden Gophers put one in the win column earlier tonight right here on FS1. Eighth-ranked Florida season opener as well. Greg Wolf and Jim Jackson in the studio in the Jeep Halftime Report. Something tells me Jimmy Jackson enjoys watching Trayvon Blewett, a guy who can flat-out fill it up like Jimmy used to back in his Buckeye days and many years in the league. He's got that scorer's mentality. Light up the scoreboard. Blewett going to the bench. Catch a breather. O'Mara comes back in. Yeah, when you look back as a Muskies fan, that run from an 11 seed to the Elite Eight on the doorstep of a Final Four, you look at guys like O'Mara, you look at some of these other pieces like Tyreek Jones, Kaiser Gates, those were some of the guys who elevated their play to propel this team to a deep run. Can they do that for an entire season this year? And if you're an XU fan, why not start thinking Final Four at the beginning of the season? It's never too early, Vince. Special team. That was a great run, as you mentioned. Wins over Maryland, Florida State, Arizona. Lost to eventual national runner-up Gonzaga in the Elite Eight. A lot of guys on the floor right now played big-time roles in that run in the postseason last year. Chris Mack in postseason, they go together very well. He's had great success there. Tyreek Jones throughout the errant pass. And now Makura looks at the three, takes the bounce into paint. Karam Cantor, left-handed three off the mark. Good block out by Devine Eke of Ryder, and it gets the Bronx going the other direction. Well done, Jordan Allen. Now, see, I'm going to put that one on Cantor. That's selfish defense, trying to get the passing lane, created the advantage for numbers for Ryder, allowing for the easy layup. Big fella, get back, especially after you miss the jump shot. No excuse. Pass knocked out of bounds. Time out on the floor. 12 minutes left here in the first half. Xavier on top by nine. Xavier up by nine. 12 minutes left here in the first half. Take a look at our Jeep Grand Cherokee stack comparison. You know, we've talked about Trayvon Blewett and J.P. McCurran. What a potent one-two punch they are. In fact, one of the best in the country, Jordan. Yeah, and it's fun to watch these two because they lead in different ways, but incredibly effective. McCurran is that, look at the graphic. You see it, he's the fiery one. Blewett's the one who goes out there, doesn't really talk about it. He is about it. He's the action guy, but funny enough, McCurran gives the action too. So these two guys will lead the way. Great luxury to have, too, when your two best players are seniors. They've got all that experience, the hardest workers. How do the other guys not fall in line as the shot clock is winding down? Good defense by Ryder. Paul Scruggs thought he was fouled, but it's going to be a turnover. What year is Paul Scruggs? He's a freshman. That's a freshman mistake. Shot clock winding down. you got to go execute. got to have an awareness of the clock, young fella. Jordan Allen. 
Looks inside. Nice take by Divine Eke, but fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line. Karim Cantor called for the personal. He talked so much about Ryder in the three-point shot. Not a heavy reliance early on, trying to attack the goal. When you drive like that, it puts pressure on the defense to defend. And a lot of times, you'll get the benefit of the doubt with the whistle. Divine Eke, transfer from Maine. Missed the first. Formula to pulling off the upset on the road. You got to take care of the basketball. You got to make your free throws. Those are two of the critical pieces to pulling it off. Whoa, banked it in. It never works. It still counts. A little full court pressure from Ryder trying to speed this game up a little bit. Force some mistakes from the Muskets. Scruggs and Marshall, a couple of freshmen on the floor for Xavier. Again, you got that 2 3 zone. You got to hit Marshall in the paint. You got to collapse the defense or drive it. Makura takes it. Offensive foul on JP Makura. And that is his second. And I'm okay with the drive. At least it's aggressive in attacking that zone. But you got to know when to pull up. Defense is anticipated. I thought it could have been a block, honestly. But that's how you're going to beat this zone. The dribble drive or collapsing it with that entry pass at the elbow, collapsing that defense. You can't settle for jump shots. Attack, attack, attack. So Makura goes to the bench, and Elias Harden comes in for Xavier. Where's number four? Another freshman. So all three of the freshmen on the floor right now for Xavier. And that is a whistle and a foul against Ryder, and I think that's going to be Tyre Marshall. It is indeed. So said Ryder had to get it going from the three-point line. Great equalizer in college basketball. Always six out of the gates. You need some of those to start falling. They're getting clean opportunities from distance. Now I mentioned there were 14 of 31 in the opening night win over Hampton. Was Ryder from three-point range. It's the most three-pointers taken or made for Ryder since Kevin Baguette, Baguette became, the, became the coach at Ryder. But he says that's kind of who they are these days, so we'll expect them to shoot plenty of them tonight. Najee Marshall, nice dish. And it's Tyreek Jones again with the dunk. Marshall faces up, misses. Paul Scruggs pushes for Xavier. The freshman from Indianapolis drove it in, lost the handle on it, puts it back up and gets it. The 12 point lead now for Xavier and Baggett wants a timeout. Back to back buckets for Xavier. First, the ball movement. You gotta love the movement from Marshall. Victory Parkway opens up the dish to Jones, and he says, I'll take the chili with mustard. And what does Raftery say? And onions. And then the freshman, Scruggs. He's a tough guy. He gets in the paint, he embraces the physicality. It's not the prettiest. Still counts for two, though, Vince. They love. Paul Scruggs and his the physical nature of his body, his will to compete and defend, and Najee Marshall the same. I mean, this this staff is just thrilled to death with these freshmen that they've got. Najee, Najee Marshall is incredibly special. He plays that point forward. He's a throwback. Great vision with his size. That's tough to defend. When you look at Scruggs, he's never going to average 20 points a game, but he's incredibly physical. Can start to impact as a defender to start. Kaiser Gates called for the foul. Second on Gates. Clinton Gooden comes back into the game. Scruggs will go to the bench. Gates is out as well as Blewett comes back. So it's Gooden, Blewett, Jones, Harden, and Najee Marshall for Xavier. First free throw good by Anthony Durham. Frederick Scott on the court for Ryder as well. And you see Coach Baggett 
Well, that's Stevie Jordan at the free throw line. Correct that. So Jordan hits them both. Got Durham and Washington Ives. Along with Frederick Scott. And Tyre Marshall for the Bronx. You know, the double, you got somebody open, got to move, make yourself an available receiver. Whistle and a foul, the hold on Keelan Washington Ives. That's just an awareness of a heady vet. A savvy player in blue and understanding the opportunities come on the dribble drive. And getting into that paint, that is the promised land. Getting into the lane, that defense will become broken down and you have shots all over the place. Just got to probe with the, the dribble drive. Just open something up. Shot clock at 10. Blew it. Three pointer. Got it. Second three of the night for Trayvon Blew it. It's nice to have a guy like that when the shot clock's winding down. The Wolf fixes all problems. Long three off the mark from Washington Ives, and Jones clears it. Under nine to play in the first half as Gooden penetrates and finishes. Quentin Gooden. So strong to the basket off the dribble. Off the mark by Marshall. Nice find, and how about Najee Marshall, the freshman? It's an 11 to 2 run for Xavier. Durham fade away. Ryder missed the shot. Did you notice that, Jordan? And four white shirts underneath the basket to rebound it. This one's thrown away. Coach Mack ain't gonna like that one. Trying to be too cute with it. It's an 11 to 2 run for the Xavier Musketeers and a 17 point advantage. And the freshman Najee Marshall getting creative. How about some That's style points, Vince? How about some style points? Eight different players have scored for Xavier. The Musketeers have built a 17 point advantage. Spreading it around 59% shooting for Xavier, while Ryder is about 17%, three of 18 from the floor. Yeah, Xavier is kind of taking a step back from just settling and trying to push the envelope, get the best shot, whether it's the dribble drive, but more importantly, making the extra pass for the higher percentage opportunity. And that's where Xavier's evolved in that last four minutes of play. And that's why you've seen this, this lead extend exponentially. Stevie Jordan on the bounce. Looks for a little baseline help, and there's Jordan Allen. He's not afraid to shoot it from anywhere. He can really light it up. Had five threes Friday night in that win over Hampton. He's one of those guys you look to to kind of provide a spark. A guy who can really get hot quickly. Najee Marshall misses the three. Fight underneath, and uh, it's going to be out of bounds to Ryder. O'Mara, the big body, hitting the floor, 6'10". Sean O'Mara, when O'Mara's banging bodies down there against Karamoko Cisse, another linebacker-type build. You're going to feel it. Stevie Jordan on the dribble drive and again making that defense guard him. He's got that quick first step. He's one of the veterans on this team. Only a sophomore does it with one hand to try and get it over O'Mara. Not a lot of contact there, but they're going to actually call it off the ball. So Cisse is going to go to the free throw line. Karamoko Cisse, the junior college transfer from Denver. Vince, as you look at bodies on the floor, if there's a guy from a power with a power conference build on Ryder, it's Cisse. So he's trying to make an impact, blue collar style, second chance opportunities, try to deflect him, block, protect the rim defensively. 
One of two. Scruggs, Gooden, Blewett, O'Mara, and Najee Marshall on the court for Xavier. Blewett, three-pointer, fouled, and he's going to go to the free-throw line and shoot three. Where Trayvon Blewett rises up to shoot that three like it's nothing. And here's the thing. I mean, what do you do if you're Frederick Scott? The guy's got in the gym range. Take a look at the replay. He's a good 10 feet off the line you have to guard him anywhere on the floor overzealous defense for Scott but that's what you got to do you got to contest him if he gets any daylight he will make you pay one of the best shooters in college basketball when he gets going a national player of the year candidate were you surprised he dipped his toe in the water and then decided to come back to Xavier <laughs> yeah, dipped his toe think, in the NBA water we should say I think coach Mack was surprised and you know, I asked coach Mack about that I said were you surprised he said in a way yes He's like, but the best thing about it, he didn't come back with the shades on and the fur coat in the open gym like he's the guy. He came back business-like, like, like ho-hum, I'm here for my senior year. Let's go get it. And that's what you love if you're a member of this team. Blew it with nine here in the first half. Jordan, and now Scott works the baseline, and there's a whistle and a foul. Paul Scruggs called for the hold. Six forty to play here in the first half, and it's a comfortable 16-point lead for Xavier. Xavier 15th in this week's Associated Press poll, and it is unarguable that it is Xavier is one of the top teams in the country. I think every bit of 15th, if not, maybe that's a little conservative. Yeah, a lot of people, they're becoming a sexy Final Four pick, and. You know, people could easily laugh and say it's November, but it's how college basketball fans work. They want to know, are we going to be there in March? And you can bet on Chris Mack. He hasn't got to that Final Four yet. He has great success in the postseason. Four Sweet 16s, coming off an Elite Eight. He's destined to get there at some point. One of the truly special coaches in college basketball. Yeah, the only Xavier head coach to take the Musketeers, the four Sweet 16s, and there have been some good head coaches here at Xavier. Has the Pete Gillen, Skip Prosser, Dad Mata, Sean Miller. This goes on and on. And there's a travel on Gooden. If you're right, or you got to be opportunistic here. Xavier's not giving you a lot of op opportunities. They're keeping that door pretty much slammed shut. Unforced errors like that, Ryder on the road, you got to make something happen. I'd love to see Stevie Jordan operate in the pick and roll. He's been that catalyst. He's the old sophomore, one of the most accomplished guys. You got to ride him in a road atmosphere like this. And Jordan, the only returning starter. We mentioned that earlier. There's your high ball screen. How about the, the four guys that, the four starters that the Ryder lost from a year ago and the contributions they made just so significant. Back cut by Jordan Allen kicked and the Ryder will keep it. I mean, you look at the four guys that Ryder lost, including Jimmy Taylor, who was a top 10 scorer in program history. No big deal, right? And then, oh, by the way, Mr. Double Double Khalil Thomas, who was good for 1,100 plus and 730 plus rebounds. And a couple other double figure scorers. So, four starters gone. Only five guys on this roster have played any basketball last season. Cisse tied up by O'Mara. Possession arrow gives the basketball to Xavier. Yeah, only five of the 16 players on the Ryder roster saw court action for the Bronx last season. So Coach Baggett said, we're going to have some growing pains. But uh, he really likes the talent that he has assembled there at Ryder. Believes they've got a lot of wins coming their way. But that was way too easy for Sean O'Mara. Great setup there by Xavier. Flash to the ball on the low block. It's an easy game. Drive Jordan Allen draws the contact. He'll go to the free throw line. Sharing the ball. That's the key, right? And there are some post post screening down down under right there. Flash ball side. Catch it. Go up quick with it. Laser pass. And that's just good interaction with the big ceiling down low, carving out some real estate. Jordan Allen goes to the free throw line. Shoot a couple. O'Mara picked up that foul. That is his second. Line up 
Here comes Devon Eke back into the game for Ryder. Tyree Jones back in for Xavier. And Mara going to the bench with those two fouls. Fifteen point lead approaching the five minute mark here in the first half. Makura tried to rifle it in and thread the needle. Tyreek Jones tied up underneath. Possession arrow is going to give the basketball to Ryder. Xavier trying to run similar action that worked to success with the O'Mara layup. Tried to flash Jones this time but couldn't provide the seal. Results in a turnover. Jordan on the bounce. Now Allen. Randall missed it off the side of the backboard, pulled down by Tyreek Jones. Well, not, not much is happening inside for Ryder, that's for sure. Nice interior defense by Xavier, and then Ryder's just not making the shots. They're going to have to shoot it at a little better percentage for sure here in the second half with 444 to play in the first. Yeah, and having watched a lot of 18 to 22 year old kids play basketball, you know when they're really guarding? is when the ball's going in the basket. Once they see that ball go in the basket, the intensity is higher. The commitment to defending is omnipresent. But when you're not making shots, it's a domino effect. You start lagging on the other end, giving up easy baskets. You're starting to see a little bit of that with Ryder. Tyree Randall called for that foul for the Bronx, his second. Blew it. Knocks down both free throws. Double figures for the senior from Indianapolis. Blue had averaged 18 and a half last year and then was even better in the NCAA tournament. One of the top players in the country. And I hear his name a lot around the college basketball land throughout the course of the season. How about that? Divine Eke had it with a layup and just couldn't corral it. Yeah, Eke was really excited to be where he was with a pristine opportunity. Coughed it up. Unforced error. Can't have those on the road as the underdog. Stays in that zone. Jones battling inside with Cisse. Trying to get position. And there's going to be a whistle and a foul on Blewett. Wow. I don't like that one. I think the fans agree with me. So Trayvon Blewett called for the foul. And Coach Chris Mack. Not too pleased with it either. 17 point advantage behind 11 from Trayvon Buick. Xavier here in the first half, the 15th ranked Musketeers shooting 58% from the floor. And as much as they're doing it on the offensive end, Jordan, real story maybe is what they're doing defensively, limiting Ryder to 18%. That length of Xavier's defense really frustrating Ryder, where Xavier could improve. Seven first half turnovers. That's something they want to shore up moving into that second half. Good and hounds. Jordan, and then there's a whistle and a foul going the other direction against Ryder. It's a divine Eke called for the personal. His first. Final four minutes here of the first half. Vince Welch along with Jordan Cornett from the Cintas Center on the campus of Xavier University. Xavier out of the Big East and Ryder from the Metro Atlantic. Three on the way from Blewett, caught the side of the backboard. Pushing with numbers is Ryder and the lob and the finish. Devon Eke. Ryder's got three minutes. They need to get something positive going their way here before halftime. Yeah, they say it dunks only worth two points. I don't necessarily agree. Sometimes it's a momentum play to push you over. Inside to Tyree Jones. So impressed with Jones' development from a year ago. 
especially since one of the critical pieces to his evolution is the ability to finish. He's looked pretty solid there this evening. And rejects that offering by Keelan Washington Ives. Agent Zero defensively. Great position, help side. This meat is undercooked. Send it back. Jordan Long three off the mark. One of nine from three point range for Ryder here in the first half. Gooden dishes and the freshman, Najee Marshall. Cisse leans in and gets it in over Jones. Third point for Cisse, and now the turnover. Ives leaves it for Jordan. So back-to-back -back baskets for Ryder, but still a 15-point game with just under two minutes to play in the first half. Tally another turnover for the Muskies. When you look at places of improvement in this first half, no doubt Coach Mack will probably point to turnovers at halftime. Lob inside for Jones, who got good position. They're rattling the rim out there tonight. Yes, That's the athleticism. Up, up, and away. An extra step on that man's ladder with the finish, but Xavier with a clap back of their own by way of the dribble drive. The one hand jelly for Marshall. And now Tyreek Jones steps to the free throw line to shoot a couple. Started all four games in the NCAA tournament last year and is one of those players you mentioned earlier, Jordan, that it really came on in the late stages of the season a year ago and just continued working through the summer. And we're really seeing the fruits of that labor coming into his own. Yeah, he puts on that hard hat, grabs that lunch pail, and goes to work for 40 minutes. You're talking about a guy who was playing about 11 minutes per game but was wildly productive, especially on that offensive glass. Great defender, but he's growing offensive. That's what's been fun to see. He's got nine here in the first half. Weave out top for Ryder. Washington Ives puts up the fadeaway, but it's a couple of feet short and blew it. Leaves it for Marshall, and he's fouled. Stevie Jordan called for the personal, and Nashi Marshall will go to the free throw line. I like opportunistic offense from Xavier Marshall. You're hearing his name called a lot in a variety of different realms of the game, whether it's passing, distributing, getting out in transition, and pursuing an easy deuce, going to the free throw line and earning it. Really like what this young man has to offer. I mean, a bright future ahead. Without question for the freshman, Najee Marshall, you look at the big three, the freshman for Xavier, I'd go so far as to say he's probably the most ready right now to have an impact. And you can see by the fact that he's in that starting lineup by calling his name a lot throughout this first half. Jones to the bench with those nine points, and O'Mara's back in for the last minute 20. Marshall hits one of two. He's got five. Three on the way from Frederick Scott. Boy, they needed that one. Stop the bleeding a little bit. Not many have gone down from three-point range for Ryder here in the first half after they made 14 on Friday night. How about Trayvon Blewett with 13 now in the first half? Scott looked at it, puts it on the floor, and gets it in. And a foul. So count the basket, and Scott will go to the free throw line. It's a late whistle. Fans don't like it. Quick first step, catches Blewett off guard, goes right to the rim, and I'm actually okay with it. I saw Mayer put his body into him, hip checked him a little bit. And that's the third foul on O'Mara. It's not the most physical of fouls. You're not getting your bang for your buck as you hear the boos, but it's a foul. It is a foul. So O'Mara has to go to the bench with those three fouls. Karim Cantor comes in. 
Washington Ives goes to the bench for Ryder, and Anthony Durham has come in to replace him. Scott can't convert the three, but gets the offensive rebound, and then better than a three-point play. How about a four-point play? It's unacceptable. Free throw blockout has to be there. Guy at the free throw line who shoots it. No way he gets that basketball. No way. Final 30 seconds of the first half. Ryder making a little bit of a surge here in the final couple of minutes before halftime. And there's another turnover. Oh, oh, you got a whistle and a foul, and it's going to be before the turnover, a blocking foul on Devon Eke of Ryder. And that's his second. Scrubs dodged the bullet right here. Comes to the jump stop. Right call on a block, but that was almost another turnover for the Muskies. Luckily, the contact preempted the turnover. Couple bang bang fouls here, Vince. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. wearing that striped shirt and carrying that whistle, it's not the easiest job, that's for sure. Heavy lies that crown, doesn't it? Strokes misses the first as Tyreek Jones comes back in. The lead was up to 19 for Xavier, and now it's 13. Final 20 seconds. Shot clock is off. Stevie Jordan on the bounce. Got to make a play here, Stevie Jordan. It's got to be your move. Crossover. Jordan Allen, long three. Got it. Well, not much has gone right for Ryder here in the first half, but they closed with a surge, including the three-pointer from Jordan Allen. Xavier led by 19, but it's a 10-point game at the half. Xavier 44, Ryder 34. At the Centos Center in Cincinnati, Ohio, the campus of Xavier University, getting ready for second half action between Xavier and Ryder. Xavier led by as many as 19. Ryder closed on a 14-5 run. And it's a 10-point game at the break as we take a look at the Jeep halftime stats. Yeah, and you look, Xavier has 20 points in the paint, which seems like it would be sufficient, except for they can do more there. You look at the free throw opportunities for Ryder, 14. Xavier's defense shouldn't be allotting that much physicality from the opposition, so they can be better there. And what you don't see is turnovers. I'm telling you, the Muskies got to take better care of the basketball in the second half as well. Trayvon blew it. Led all scores with 13 points in the first half. He's the great eraser. You didn't have your best first half, but you can count on a preseason All-American, all, a first-teamer in conference to get it done. He can do it in a variety of different ways, how he skins that cat. He's got a good mid-range. He can put the ball on the deck. He can get to the rim, and he's got a great long ball. So a very gifted score, fun to watch. 13 points and five boards for the senior. Blew it. Only player in double figures for Xavier. The only player in double figures for Ryder was Stevie Jordan, who had 10. It'll be Blewett and Kaiser Gates, along with Tyreek Jones, J.P. McCura, and Quentin Gooden, the original starters for Xavier. And also the original starting lineup for Ryder, Jordan Allen, Anthony Durham, Frederick Scott, Tyre Marshall, and Stevie Jordan. McCura. Deep into the corner and around the horn for Blewett. Whistle and a foul underneath. Going against Ryder's Tyre Marshall. And it's essential for XU to get off to a quick start here in the second half. You do not want Ryder to linger and start to build confidence. You have to put that to rest early here and establish dominance on your home floor. Just underway second half. Inside for Tyree Jones. Can't get it. Boy, right there, point blank, and it just wouldn't go down. Bigger, stronger, faster, but when the bunny becomes a bear, 
It's never good. Durham and now Jordan. Durham for three. Didn't get many open looks in the first half. Three Xavier players fighting for the rebound, and it's out of bounds to Ryder. You love the elite defensive rebounding position, but you gotta be unselfish. Let one guy grab it so he can start to fill lanes and transition. Ryder just three of 11 from three-point range in the first half. Durham got a nice look at it that time, but couldn't get it. Now Jordan Allen way outside the NBA line, if there would have been. I mean, his range is across the 10-second line. That thing from Southwest Indiana. Turnover, and Allen again, and he lost the handle. Jordan misses it, and then Durham is fouled. How about that? Ryder gets three attempts at it. Looked like one of those halftime shows with the trampoline and the miss, the miss, and the make. How about this one for a make? In the gym range, Vince. In the gymnasium range. Gets it done, and that's some confidence. Coming out in the second half, like I said, confidence building from a lesser opponent. Kaiser Gates called for that foul, and that is his third. Durham. Hits the first of two. It's a five-point game. Now defensively, you're going to see Ryder trying to apply that pressure to shorten the shot clock, but then also try to see if they can get more turnovers because Xavier's been prone here. One of the things that Chris Mack talks about with his Xavier ball club is valuing the basketball, and Xavier's been a little loose with it. Here tonight, Gates for three. Missed it. Kept alive, knocked out of bounds by Ryder. Xavier's got to get back to establishing an interior presence. That's where they have a distinct advantage. You've got some of those bodies out there on the floor at length, but I really look at Jones to provide some interior scoring. Ryder has stayed in that zone defense all night. Blew it on the bounce, and now Makura goes baseline, draws some contact, and still gets it in. What a great drive and protecting the ball by Makura, and right back comes Tyre Marshall. Blew it, three-pointer, got it. So smooth, and the release is so quick. 16 for Blew it. Good swing pass to create some space and an advantage for the best player on the floor. Jordan got a little bump and won. Stevie Jordan with the basket, and Quentin Gooden called for the foul. Watch J.P. McCure work the baseline. Tough-minded, embraces the contact like all great finishers. His head is looking at the goal the entire time. That's a special finish. And then the assassin from distance. First team, all-conference, all-Big East performer. Levon Blue. Stevie Jordan at the free throw line. Converts the three-point play. So the three-point play from Jordan brings it back to a five-point game. McCurry's just got a couple of buckets. Been quiet tonight, but Gates lights it up from beyond the arc. Kaiser Gates, three-pointer right on time for the Musketeers. Jordan Allen, offensive foul, used that extra arm. It doesn't look like much, but a few probing dribbles from Gooden. Gets that defense to commit to him, allows an open look from Kaiser Gates. One of his specialties, catch and shoot. He's one of those three and D guys, put him in position to succeed. First foul on Jordan Allen. Gives the ball back to Xavier. 
with an eight-point lead, and there's Jones, make it double figures. Ryder just has no answer for Tyreek Jones inside. Does such a good job of playing before the action, getting in position. Marshall looked at the perimeter shot. That's not his game, and instead Frederick Scott will shoot the 15-footer. Xavier on the push. Gates. Way off the mark, but Blewett is there. That's a pass, Vince. You give him the assist on that one? Yeah, it looked like oxygen. It was a pass, man. It's a pass. <laughs> Xavier coming alive. Sintas making some noise here on a Monday night. Opening win Friday against Moorhead State. Haven't hit the 62 mark yet here in this ball game, but Chris Mack's got to be pretty pleased with the last few minutes in these sequences. Yeah, an attacking offense right here. The dribble drive commits two defenders, allows for an easy layup from Jones, who does a great job of playing before the catch. And then this next play, sometimes better be lucky than good. Oxygen on the jumper. But again, good real estate carved out from one of the best players in the nation. That's number five, Trayvon Blewett. Having a big night with 18 at this point. Well, Blewett, that's why he's on the National Player of the Year watch lists. He can do it from anywhere on the court. Three-pointers, two-pointers, defends, rebounds, shares the ball. Never feels like he takes a bad shot in the offense. Always within the flow. Durham with the hop step, needs some help. Jordan is there to help. Shot clock at 10. Got to hurry. Five seconds on the clock. Jordan rushes one up, and it's tapped out of bounds. Touched last by Tyreek Jones. So Ryder will have it underneath her own bucket. Down by 12. Should be immediate. Ryder climbed to within five. And then it was a 7-0 run for Xavier. The Musketeers will try to add to it when we come back. A 24-10 run for Ryder that bridged the first and second half, so it was answered by a 7-0 run for Xavier, and it's a 12-point lead for the Musketeers. Hey, check out the Gavit games. They continue tomorrow with 20th ranked Purdue facing Marquette, 830 Eastern here on FS1. And then on Wednesday, Butler squares off with Maryland. All this week, the Gavit games, the Big East against the Big Ten, FS1 are streaming live on Fox Sports Go. I know you had an opportunity to see Butler in their season opener. It's an underrated basketball team, Vince. Kamar Baldwin special, Keelan Martin, one of the best players in the conference. Play with a chip on their shoulder, feeling like they got no respect this year. That's when Butler's their most dangerous. Ryder with the basketball trying to end a 7 0 Xavier run. And there's a whistle and a foul on Blewett. How about the Big East first team unit for. The conference and Trayvon Blewett, How about Marcus Foster, Carrington, Martin. You mentioned K Kellen Martin at uh, Butler along with Angel Delgado. Yeah, a lot of guys who've logged a lot of minutes in the conference. I'd take that, that five league. and go to work. Absolutely. Makura partially blocked. Good job defensively. Great swing pass. Makura needed some help getting it to the bucket, and uh, he got helped out. Fouled. He'll go to the line and shoot two. Now, now, see what Coach Mack looks at the film tomorrow of this team. He's going to sing the praises of this. This isn't going to make the, the highlight film, but it's the cross-court pass from good to the point guard that allows the advantage in the driving lane for Makura to draw the foul. Moving the basketball, creating chaos for the defense, allowing for the easy play. Cisse's third foul. A bit of a quiet night for Makura. As you see Jordan Allen going to the bench. Makura just five points, make it six. But he could put him up in a hurry. He had 18 against Moorhead State, and Makura is one of those guys that he can get hot, snap of a finger. You want to keep him in check. Off the mark, Makura rebounds. 
And he does so many things, doesn't he, George? Absolutely. It's 6'5". He's got that size. Blew it again. Trayvon blew it with 21. And it's a 12-0 run for Xavier. Ryder needs an answer, and they're going to get it. Karamoko Sise stops the 12-0 run. And right back comes Blue it again. Back-to-back -back threes for Blue it, and now he pulls the rebound. And a foul on Tyree Randall of Ryder. You gotta be alert at all times when you have an immense talent like Blue on the floor. How about the 6'5 point off guard? JP McCure pushing it, vision, head up, finds his guy, his senior counterpart, bangs it down for three, and then the other time Blue it says, no, I'm good, McCure, I'm gonna go ahead and take this one myself. One of the best players in the nation. This is what I do, I get buckets. Five of eight beyond the arc tonight. He's got three three-pointers here in the second half. Great find from McCure to O'Mara. He couldn't finish it. You know, we talked about quiet night for McCure offensively in regards to the points, but he has shared the ball. He's rebounded. He's led. I mean, he's one of those guys that he does a lot of things that don't necessarily show up in the point column. Guards, he rebounds. Sometimes he makes the pass that leads to the pass. Just a good feel. When you talk about this Xavier team, you look at all the pieces and the personnel, high IQ guys that play well off each other. Nobody has to have the shot. Blew it again, misses this time. Jordan quickly, but turns it over. Good outlet. Blew it to Makura. Draws the foul, he'll shoot two. Makura's out here like a trapeze artist, man. Floating in the air. Drawing the contact, getting it the hard way at the free throw line. You gotta love that. Meat and potatoes. Marshall calls for the called for the foul. That is his fourth. You know what this ball doesn't do besides the bounce pass? Doesn't hit the floor. No dribbles necessary. Young children at home learning the game. Take note right there. That's throwback basketball. Like those old Celtics moving that thing down the floor. Teamwork making that dream work. Nakira, a great free throw shooter, five of five tonight. He's also got six assists, three rebounds. After Ryder got it to a five point game at 49 44, Xavier has gone on a 17 to 2 run. And now it's a 20 point lead. Blew it to the bench with those 24 points. Paul Scruggs in and along with Kaiser Gates, Najee Marshall, and a whistle and a foul going against Xavier. Nakira would have got the charge foul by great position defensively on the ball. But it's... They call it on Sean O'Mara. Contact off the ball with O'Mara down on the low block. Let the big guys play. And that's O'Mara's fourth. He's going to leave, and Karim Cantor will come in. Don't like those fouls because they don't create advantage anywhere. It's so far off the ball. Just get him at a dead ball and say clean it up a little bit. Don't need to stop the game for those. Let him play, Vince. Spoken like a big man. Yeah, right? <laughs> Touche. Well done. How about that? Nice dish from Stevie Jordan. Led the Metro Atlantic in assists last season, and Devine Eke was right there to finish it. Gates doesn't miss many of those when he has the time to set. The riders when you want to take advantage, no blew it. Frederick Scott misses the three. Makira rebounds. Yeah, when Blewett's off the floor, where's the offense going to come from? Makira misses. Makira's a nice option to have when Blewett's out of the game, though, isn't he? Yeah, a lot of guys that could still do it on the floor for Xavier, but without their big-time piece, you got to figure this one we can make moves. And right here, a good backdoor cut. Asleep at the wheels, Kaiser Gates, and he gets beat. Easy deuce. And Makira draws the contact. 
Speaking of mental lapses, defensively, a letdown in the interior for Ryder defensively. Kira takes full advantage. Third on Eke, and Makura will go back to the free throw line where he is six of six tonight. Makura averaged just over 14 a game last season. Watch him take advantage on the inbounds. We call this the okie doke. That's a guy who's played a lot of ball. Saw the defense, not paying attention. Gave a little motion. Got the touch, got the free throw. Double figures now for Makuras. He hits both, leaves the game with 10. And the freshman, Elias Harden, comes in. It's Harden from East Point, Georgia. He's got a nice stroke. Another one of those freshmen they're very high on. Coach Mack really likes this young man. I think he needs a little bit of time to acclimate himself to the high level. Jordan way off the mark on that three-pointer. Canner pulls down the rebound. Scruggs on the bounce and the push with a 20-point advantage for Xavier. Gates for three. Well, he missed that one over on the other corner, and I said I was surprised because he doesn't miss too many when he has time to set. He didn't miss that one. And now Najee Marshall is going to be called for the block. Xavier heating it up from long range. Trayvon blew it with a game high 24. And he is not doing it alone. Vince, that's why they call him Trayvon, man. Clearly, that three piece nugget. Xavier on a 22 to four run. The Musketeers getting it done from every angle. Ranked 15th in the country according to the latest Associated Press poll. A lot to like about this team, Vince. You love Makura. You obviously love what Blewett gives you. Got a chance to see Notre Dame, an offensive juggernaut once again. I'm really excited and juiced for that Duke-Michigan State matchup on Tuesday in the Champions Classic. Michigan State looking for revenge at the loss of Duke a season ago. A lot of very talented youth mixed in with some experienced vets. Gates misses the long-range three. If Ryder's going to make a game of it, they got to make a run. Vince Welch and Jordan Cornette with you from the Centos Center in Cincinnati. Xavier and Ryder. It was a five-point game earlier here in the second half, and then Xavier went on a 17-0 run. Seventeen to two run. I don't want to cheat, Ryder. 12-0 run, 17 to two. They they took care of business in a hurry. Ryder people out there listening, thank you, Vince. You're an honorable man. Gates inside on the baseline. He can shoot the three, and he can go down on the block. Versatile. Good use of the glass, too. That short corner, also another option that's omnipresent to beat down this zone defense. When I say short corner, I mean hugging that baseline about eight feet away from the rim. Catch, score, simple. Washington Ives looking to beat Paul Scruggs off the dribble. Scott, he couldn't get anywhere. Shot clock at five. Durham, long three, off the mark, Scruggs rebounds. Now if you're gonna call for the ball screen, you gotta do something with it. Make a drive, make an attack, move, don't just settle. Marshall, the freshman, is fouled, working the baseline. All three of Xavier's key freshmen on the floor right now. Scruggs, Najee Marshall, and Elias Harden. Durham picks up the foul, that is his third. Marshall is a walking matchup nightmare. 6'7", long. Guard-like skills, a point forward, comfortable squaring and facing, can shoot the three, changes ends with those rim runs like a deer, rebounds, defends, does a lot of things to frustrate the opposition. I like this young man a lot. I really think he's going to be a very critical piece to the success of Xavier. So much focus on McCure and Blewett. He could be that third option. He's that talented offensively. Missed the front end of the one-and-one. Marshall went to Hargrave Military, and as there's a whistle and a foul, Hargrave Military also produced David West and Stanley Burrell, a couple of Hall of Famers here at X. Never heard of them. <laughs> Just kidding. Flat out studs. 
David West, I believe, second all time on that scoring list. I think Trevon Blewett, Trayvon Blewett has a chance to maybe snip him, but Byron Larkin sitting there comfortably on the sofa with that career scoring record. Ain't nobody touching that. You won't meet a nicer guy in this game than Byron Larkin. Good to see Larkin here tonight. Always uh, works the radio broadcasts up top. Maybe and that's uh, why he's so happy all the time. He knows nobody's touching that scoring record. Edmund Sumner here tonight as well as Paxton Wilson shoots the three and misses it. Sumner, a member of the Indiana Pacers. They have the night off, so he made the drive down to Cincinnati. Eke, three, miss it. Jordan Allen tried to rebound and put it back up, but couldn't get it in. He'll go to the free throw line. Got to get some love to Ryder. Despite falling down heavy here, they continue to fight. Continue to chase down second chance opportunities right here. Oxygen. But the put back rebounding opportunity from namesake Allen to draw something up. Well, that's... What Kevin Baggett said he wants to see from his young rider ball club. He wants them to compete every day, every day in practice, compete every game, and get them to buy into playing defense. Not easy to do sometimes when you're talking about such a young team, but Baggett's done a nice job through the years at Ryder, and he's the 2015 Metro Atlantic Coach of the Year. Inside to Tyreek Jones trying to find some movement, but draws the contact on the foul going against Frederick Scott. Good look at Scott. He had a double-double against Hampton. Nice way to debut with the program. 15 points and 14 rebounds. Always nice when you redshirt freshman first game for your club throws up a double-double. Yeah, there's a lot of fanfare with him coming in and wondering what kind of player he could be for this Ryder team. And it's not having the best night tonight, but yet still. Reason for optimism is you look at him as one of those pieces. This team is so young. You're not going to come in here and win this game against a proven, experienced team with so much talent like Xavier. But to their credit, they have competed throughout. They were on the doorstep at one point in this. Still game left. They could come back. But I love the fight in Ryder. And there are some pieces in place. Well, and just because they're down 24 doesn't mean you can take po can't take positives from it. No question. Thirteen for Tyreek Jones. Under nine and a half to play. Jordan Allen missed it. Well, Jordan Allen has a nice shot, and he can put points on the board in a hurry, but he just has not had the handle tonight, has not had the range as Gooden misses the drive. The Bronx on the push. Paxton Wilson. Drives it in, shot fake, draws the contact, and blew it, called for the foul. And Wilson will go to the free throw line and take a couple. Third on blew it. Good rip through, couple power dribbles, head fake at the defender in the air. He doesn't care if he's an All American candidate, he's going to take it out, blew it. Wilson hits one of two, his first points of the night, of the season, in fact. A freshman from Clearwater, Florida. Blew it, long range, missed it. Jones there for the offensive rebound and the putback. He has been a man among boys tonight down around that basket, Tyreek Jones, the he, he sophomore. His, he knows his role, Vince. I mean, he catches the ball, scoring opportunities close to the rim. Great offensive rebound and anticipation from him. We love guys like that that don't try and do too much. He's not a guy that falls in love with a three-point shot, doesn't take him. Look, just gets in position, gets in front of the defense, and they have no shot with a guy as physical as him and easy to. 15 points and seven rebounds for Jones. As you see, Karamoko Sise come into the ball game for Ryder. Yeah, Jones, remember, Jones just a sophomore which is crazy because he is built like a grown man. Well, even the young players on Xavier's team, whether it's Scruggs or Najee Marshall, I mean, 
they don't have freshman bodies. No, no, no. And it's funny you mentioned some of those guys like Jones, a sophomore who's played big time minutes, so he's older than your typical sophomore, much like a Quentin Gooden. So that's why this seems so old and experienced. When you look at it, it's not laden with a ton of seniors, but their sophomores are old sophomores. Scruggs missed the three. Wilson rebounds. Under eight and a half to play. Jordan needs some help. Finds Washington Ives who missed it. Chased around and Ryder's gonna get a second chance at it. Paxton Wilson says, I like it. Three pointer for Wilson and he now has six in a row. Making the most of the opportunity. That's what it's about. And one. Scruggs and the foul. Everybody getting in on the act. Xavier by 23. Looking to win their second in a row to open the season. Team in the early stages here of the second half, but Xavier has been dominant since then. And the play of the freshman hasn't Hurt the Musketeers, that's for sure. Scruggs has five tonight. Nisey Marshall has five. Harden hasn't gotten in the scoring column yet, but these are three talented young players. Yeah, three very talented guys. Marshall's going to be the one who makes the more immediate headlines. He's the most ready right now as you look at the other two. Harden, I think, needs a little bit of time to get stronger. He's got good mid-range, highly athletic with great size. And then you look at Scruggs. Scruggs' way on the floor will be defensively. He has abil the ability to be a lockdown defender early on. Scruggs played his high school ball in Indianapolis with Joey Brunk, who's an outstanding young player for Butler. They were quite a formidable combination at Southport High School in Indianapolis. Yeah, two Southport guys, and they share something in common despite Brunk being a 6'10 senior, 6'10 center. Both are extremely physical and play a physical brand of basketball. It doesn't make it easy on the opponent. Under seven and a half to play. Blew it. Three more off the mark. And Tyreek Jones called for over the back. You know, we talked earlier tonight about the Ryder Bronx and how they made 14 three-pointers in the season opening win over Hampton and how they were going to have to shoot the three and shoot it successfully tonight if they were going to stay in this game and it just hasn't happened. Yeah, avert your eyes, NSFW, not suitable for work. Those numbers for three, five and 25. Hate to put you guys on blast, but got to get that three-point shot going if you want to have a shot. And they're able to hang around a little bit here and there, but ultimately without that three-point shot to accompany them, Xavier and the talent just was able to run away with it. Well, and Kevin Baggett said, we're going to shoot 33s a night. Maybe not every night, but uh, expected to see his team shoot 30 tonight. They've shot 25. No surprise. And Xavier expected Ryder to shoot 33s. Chris Mack told his team, he said, they're going to shoot 30 tonight. And they will before it's all said and done. And credit Xavier's defense. It's not just poor shooting, but it's the pressure inflicted by that defense on the perimeter, contesting shots. The mark of a great team is the ability for the coach to get into his players and then heed the advice, go out there and execute. Keelan Washington Ives called for the foul, reached in and caught Quentin Gooden in the eye. Here's a look at Chris Mack. A pretty good player in his own day, wasn't he? Yeah, and he really embodies what this team's about. You know, came up watching Chris, me being a, a Cincinnati and um, who's now out in Chicago, but watching him play, went to my high school, shout out to St. Xavier High School. He was one heck of a player, but tough-minded, much like his players are, hard-nosed, went out there and competed for a full 40. Tell you, if those things would have cooperated, this guy might have been a big-time player at the next level. Chris was that kind of good. Started his career at Evansville and then finished it up here at Xavier and Happy has a big, him. long scar down his knee, as he told us today, three knee operations. He doesn't get up and down the floor anymore, but he made sure to let us know he can still shoot it. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think his wife shut that one down, him playing on the floor. So those days are over, coach. And another whistle and a foul. 
That's the third on on Gooden. And you look, coaches never stop coaching. Still I mean, you could, you you could be it, up right? 24, you could be up 44, and you're not going to stop coaching. That's why this program's got to where it's at, very meticulous, a perfectionist. And you look at the long line of coaches that have had great success. Coach Mack may be doing it arguably better than all of them ever had, especially with the postseason success. You can't argue with that one. The most winningest coach in the postseason for Xavier. But he continues to be relevant, continues to take the next step with this program. It's been really impressive to see. And there's a whistle and uh, wipe that free throw off across the free throw or uh, lane violation for Karamoko Cisse. That's a second lane violation. Ryder's been called for tonight. Got whistled for one of those in the first half, too. Under seven. Xavier comfortably on top by 23. Trayvon blew it, one of the main reasons why, as he drives it in, finishes it. Blew it having his way with 26 points tonight. Guy is a tactician, so methodical with his moves, deliberate yet unstoppable. Turnover, Mercura pushes. Draws the contact. Oh, they're going to wipe it off. They say on the floor. No, oh, you can't do that. Oh, man, you reach, I teach, Makura to the 10. Some English on it. Oh, baby, no. Mm. So Makura goes into the free throw line and knocks down the first. He is about automatic at the strike. It's fun to watch about these two seniors that we've talked a lot about through this broadcast, deservedly so, in McCurian and Blewett. These aren't exceptional athletes. These aren't high-level, superior athletes on that level. These guys do it a different way, but immensely effective. Sublime talents on the floor that do it with savvy play. Jordan kicks it to Wilson for three. Got it. Paxton Wilson's done a nice job off the bench. For Ryder, a couple of three-pointers, nine points. A whistle and a foul against the Bronx. I'll tell you what, you Eke might whistled for it. You might as well forge your mail down on that low block to Jones because he is living down there and eating right. Really profiting on that low block by simply carving out some real estate, loitering down low, and making money at the charity strike. Check that uh, that foul called on Tyree Randall and not Eke. Tyreek Jones at the free throw line to try to add to his total tonight. What a nice effort it's been for Jones. 16 points, make it 17 to go along with seven rebounds, a couple of block shots. Jones out of the game and O'Mara comes back in. I'm guessing Jones is probably done for the night, wouldn't you think, with six... 07 to play, leaves with 17 points, and that's a new career high for Tyreek Jones. That's when you pull the Costanza, you do the walk-off. Career high. Nothing left to see here. Makura in transition. That's what... Makura can bring to the table. He can take it to the basket as we've seen him do so many times tonight, or he can pull up and knock down that three, silky smooth in transition. It's a team that can score in bunches. Oh. Makura's got 14, Blewett's got 26, and Jones a career high 17. Xavier's got four and double figures and a 28-point lead. Hard to believe this was a five-point game earlier in the second half. The Musketeers have dominated since then. It's Washington Ives, drives, count it, and a foul. And Quentin Gooden going to be called for that, his third. Washington Ives, do it yourself off the bounce. A little hesitation, devastation. Finish off the glass, ticky-tack foul. If you're going to foul him, commit to it. Don't give up the two. Lackadaisical with it. The old-fashioned three-point play opportunity. 
is the first basket of the night for Washington Ives. Had a couple double doubles last season. He's capable. Yeah, absolutely. Game so nice, they named him twice. Washington Ives. Under five and a half to go. Scruggs and Gates, Makura, O'Mara, and Elias Harden on the floor for X. Gates, three-pointer, off the mark. Battle for the loose ball underneath, and there's a whistle and a foul, and that's going against Ryder. Well, Xavier's going to move to 2-0, and oh, but uh, Thursday night, going to be on the road to take on the Wisconsin Badgers. Never an easy place to play in Madison, all part of the Gavit games. You'll see it here on FS1. In a lot of ways, you thought maybe Xavier would come out flat here with the looking ahead factor heading to Madison. I'll tell you what, I've seen a lot of games, done some up there in Madison. It's no easy place to play. A very physical bunch that loves to dig in and defend against the Xavier offense. It'll be interesting to see how they mesh as McCura checks out to a round of applause. Great effort from the seniors this evening. And McCura leaves with 14 points, six assists, four rebounds. Stuff that stat sheet, my friend. Wilson three again, misses this one. Washington Ives is there to rebound it. Always find it interesting to see how your teams play when the outcome is well in hand. Regardless of whether you're on the, the bottom end of the score or the top end of the score, it's, it's so hard to keep that intensity and that focus. Absolutely, character playing downhill, trying to get to the rim, trying to draw fouls. This time it's Anthony Durham. 13 points in his debut versus Hampton. Again, not the easiest effort, or it's not coming easy for him this evening against a better opponent, but yet still, that fight is there. I know Coach Baggett's gonna be happy with that. Tomara fouling out with five, or excuse me, six points. Six points and six rebounds for O'Mara as he goes to the bench. And Tyreek Jones, who we mentioned earlier, thought he was probably done for the night when he went to the bench with six minutes left. He got a little over a minute breather, and he's back <laughs> in because O'Mara fouled out. Yeah, if you look at O'Mara and you a six-point, six-rebound effort, that's probably where he'll hover all season. And, and if you get those kind of numbers out of him as a reserve big, you'll be okay with it. Jones with the basketball. He's already got a career high 17. Make it 19. 19 points for Jones. Hakeem the Dream would have loved that move, the running one hander. And now Jones with the block. Randall on the drive, misses it, and Jones pulls another rebound. Scruggs to the basket. Xavier looking at putting another 100 on the board tonight. After scoring 100 the other night in the season opener, scored 101 against Moorhead State. Durham misses. Cantor rebounds. Here's Chris Mack telling his Musketeers to be patient offensively. Scruggs says, I've... I've seen patience. <laughs> it's wide open. It's a wide open three. <laughs> you know how the young guys do, Vince. They want it now. He said, hey, we passed it a few times. Isn't that patient? <laughs> I play without foul. It'll be the challenge for oh, this nice. Team. Nice back cut by Durham. Side pass to Scruggs, and he gets it using the left. And that puts Xavier over the century mark. Back to back games, they've opened with 100 plus. Washington Ives hits the two. First time Xavier's been back to back 100 plus since the 07 08 season. Back nearly a decade. Team effort offensively, 20 plus assists. Sharing the sugar. Cantor and Eke. 
battling to tie it up. Everybody's gotten in on the act tonight, including a career high performance from Tyreek Jones, Xavier Big at the Centos Center. Time for this team to take it to the next level. For some, Sunday is about the Redskins. Fight for the man next to you, and let's win the game. Win up. Proving they belong against the elite, the electrifying Drew Brees and the Saints. For others, Sunday is about the high-flying rise of the Rams against an unrelenting Vikings D. The NFL on Fox begins Sunday at 1 Eastern. Check your local listings. I got this. Okay. <laughs> Go deep. Chasing your dreams, we make sure you never have to stop. At 12 o'clock, rock, we're gonna rock around the clock tonight. But get your bad bags so up, join me home. We'll have some fun when the clock strikes. One. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. We're gonna rock, 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 till the broad daylight. We're gonna rock, we're gonna rock around the clock tonight. The Ruben is back. For limited time at Subway. So much room. Xavier Musketeers packed the home court. But what's even more impressive is what Musketeers learn, serve, and achieve together. Xavier, all for one. Five and double figures for Xavier as the Musketeers top the century mark again tonight. Two for two. And uh, Trayvon Blewett, who had 25 points in the opener against Moorhead State on Friday, has done it again tonight with 26. How about these points per minute He's for Blewett? Been, been all night, like I said, a porch light. So cerebral with it. It's methodical. It's like watching Le'Veon Bell take a handoff and read the defense before he acts. That's kind of how blue it is with the basketball. Washington Ives with the nice driving bucket. Cardinal Sin making a Steelers reference in the Queen City. Ooh. I'm going to hear about that one for a long time. Scruggs rejected by Eke. Under two minutes. Washington Ives launches the three, missed it. Scruggs pulls the rebound. Scruggs knows one speed. <laughs> it's over 100 miles per hour late for the speeding ticket. You know, it's tough because even though you're, you know, your team is up by 30, you still want to play hard. Especially freshmen. Leighton Schrand into the ball game. You're talking about freshmen wanting to play hard. How about Schrand, the walk-on, getting some rare action tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Here's a good look at Leighton Schrand, a second year walk on. Fans have gotten all they want this evening. A Muskies win. They've reached the century mark. Now you got to see the walk on score. I mean, that's the job of the rest of the guys on the team, right? To get Schrand the ball in a position he can put it in a bucket. With 90 seconds, it's plenty of time to make magic happen. No question, Vince. Eke turns, faces, spins, and nice dish for Durham. Both teams have continued to play hard, and it's really indicative of what you often see in a 28-point game. I mean, this was a five-point game in the early stages of the second half, and then Xavier went on a dominating roll and has finished such as Elias Harden misses the shot. Durham on the baseline, takes it in, draws the contact. No whistle. Shrugs will back it out. It's under 30 seconds to play. Xavier is going to go to 2-0. 
with Thursday's game at Wisconsin next on the on the schedule. Schran wanted to make a move with it, lost his footing. Hey, tallied something. Not points, turnover, but you're in the record books. Hey, he was trying to make book. something happen. I give him that. He made the book. Ten seconds to play, and Washington Ives hits again. Ryder's going to fall to one and one, and they'll play on Wednesday against Hartford, while Xavier goes to two and zero, oh and will be at it on Thursday against the Wisconsin Badgers in the Gavit Games. Kevin Baggett has a young ball club, and he said that he would go through some growing pains, and they certainly experienced some of those growing pains tonight. But good things to come down the road for that team. But how about Xavier? And a terrific performance for Chris Max Club as they move to two and zero, oh, led by the twenty six of Trayvon Blewett. Yeah, Ryder was threatening, but the king kills when the prince feels power. And that's what you saw here on the home floor. You want your top team to come out here and handle business, do what they need to do, win the games in convincing fashion. They're supposed to win, then prepare for the big one in Madison against Wisconsin. It was a career high, 19 points for Tyreek Jones to go along with his eight rebounds. The star of the show was Trayvon Blewett with 26. Xavier dominates the second half, and Chris Max Musketeers go to 2-0. 101-75, the final. Xavier, 15th in the country, a winner over Ryder. For Jordan Cornett, I'm Vince Welch. Thanks for watching College Basketball on FS1. Don't stop me now.